It's hard to be a member of the strongest element in the game for many reasons. One that I think contributes to that sort of stress is what makes the element so powerful to begin with. Animo is almost unanimously agreed upon as the strongest of the seven for how effective it is at driving and enabling other powerful reactions through Swirl, as well as amplifying their party's damage output to absurd amounts of using the right equipment and stats like Elemental Mastery. Thanks to this, Animo has enjoyed a great deal of usage in spite of its comparatively small roster, at least before Farazan and Wanderer came out. As one of the first 5 stars in the game, Jean was an early staple for many. Those who were lucky enough to snag her in the standard banner enjoyed someone with equal parts force and recovery, something that was in short supply during the early game. As time went on, more of Animo's potential was discovered, and the evolving landscape of team building would gradually shift her out of most players' rosters. But contrary to her close friend Diluc, who I made an episode on last time, the reasons for why Jean's fallen out of popularity aren't as straightforward. So at the request of you guys in the last community poll, next episode of Why No One Plays features Jean. Before we talk about Jean though, we first have to talk about some Valentine's Day stuff, even though it's already passed. Courtesy of our sponsor for today, Empires and Puzzles. You may have heard of it before. It's a free-to-play 3-match puzzle RPG that was one of the first of its kind to combine the two genres together. Like any 3-match game, the goal is to score as good of a combination of shields as possible to damage your enemies. You can collect over 400 heroes based on different elements, very similar to Genshin, such as fire, ice, holy, dark, and nature. And every month, there are new units available to summon. Train them up and build their talent tree to upgrade your team's overall power. The game is entering its 6 year anniversary, so for new players, you have no shortage of content to go through, including weekly events, themed challenges, and feature rollouts. To commemorate the passing Valentine's Day, there's a new event called the Season of Love running right now, featuring 5 Cupid-themed heroes and 20 stages with 3 difficulty modes. So for all you Sigma gamers out there who skip Valentine's Day for the grind set, this is right up your alley. If you're interested in trying out something to play while you wait for your resin to refill, then download Empires and Puzzles using the QR code on screen or my link down below. Thanks again to Empires and Puzzles for sponsoring the video, but for now, let's go back to why no one plays Jean. What separates Jean from other animal units is that she took an entirely different approach to the element. While Sucrose, Kazuha, and Venti focus primarily on offensive control, Jean prefers defensive control, with most of her constellations and talents being geared towards that objective. Early on, this was highly sought after due to fundamental understanding of most open-world action RPGs. While we did have access to Statues of the Seven, prolonged periods of exploration would usually exhaust them of energy, forcing players to rely on healing items or their character's own survivability to endure however many hours of travel and however many groups of enemies they would run into. Unlike Chi Chi and Barbara though, Jean had one advantage, damage. While she was primarily designed as a support, Jean was still capable of dealing her fair share of damage, at the time anyway. Her elemental skill Gale Blade would unleash a blast of wind that knocked enemies away from her location, and if you held down the skill, at the cost of stamina, she would pull enemies into a whirlwind in front of her before launching them, though the damage doesn't change. Like most other support elemental skills, Gale Blade's main function was to generate energy thanks to a low cooldown of 6 seconds, making it relatively spammable. And when looking at the damage scaling, especially for back then, you could do quite a bit of damage with this thing. Not only that, but Jean's healing scaled differently from the other two, being based on her attack power and not maximum health. This meant you didn't have to compromise on damage to keep your team alive. Dandelion Breeze dealt a serviceable amount of animal damage to all enemies around her before creating a circular field that continuously dealt damage to enemies standing within it, while regenerating the HP of friendlies and cleansing their current elemental status by applying animal on them. In essence, Jean had the highest damage output among the early game healers because Chichi and Barbara had to scale max HP while Bennett doesn't necessarily do damage himself, he just makes everyone else's damage go to the moon. Credit where credit is due, Jean was a good character, a great one, especially back then. And even as the game started introducing more and more characters throughout version 1, there was never a reason to suspend use of her as no one could really do what she did. That being said, as bad as this may sound, Jean's popularity and success was critically dependent on players not discovering the actual strength of Animal because her identity was mutually exclusive from that strength. For most of the Why No One Plays episodes, there's usually a recurring problem with them in that they're either not strong enough, require more investment and party resources than are worth, or feel really bad to play. But Jean doesn't exactly have any of these issues per se, she's quite effective as a healer even now. I would go so far as to say she outstrips Kokomi when it comes to burst healing, since her ultimate does a massive amount of healing on cast, whereas Kokomi has a delay on her skill and she has to be actively attacking opponents to heal her team. Jean's not particularly expensive to work on from a defensive standpoint either. She doesn't really require any constellations or even a powerful weapon to do her job. 
In terms of party occupancy, she's an excellent quick swapper, taking no more time to use her skill and bursts as your Shintos, Bennett's, what have you. And by no means is she clunky to use, quite the opposite, she's one of the more user friendly characters out there, and far more comfortable to use than like Chi Chi who struggles to be consistent even as a healer. Her normal attacks also have a 50% chance to heal her team just like how Kokomi and Chi Chi heal on autos, and can even provide unique support boosts to her team like Animal Cleanse, which may seem irrelevant, but when you think of all the bosses or dungeons that screw you over for being afflicted with a certain element and none of them are animal, having that cleanse is very convenient. Then she has a 15% attack and movement speed buff on her constellation too, then as C4, she can shred animal resistance by 40%, allowing her the niche purpose of being an animal support because Veritas and Venerer doesn't shred animal resistance, only one of the four elements it can swirl with, and at max constellation, she gives 35% damage reduction to all friendlies within her field, so she hybridizes between healing and buffing, defense and offense. All things considered, for a day 1 5 star, who are notorious for having trash constellations, Jeans isn't half bad. Moreover, she belongs to the most powerful and adaptive element in the game. What's the issue then? It's because she belongs to the strongest element that it actually works against her more often than not. Animo is not inherently an offensive element, it's an enabling element used to empower the four elements it can interface with, Pyro, Hydro, Electro, and Cryo. The strength is indirectly attributed, therefore having multiple sources of Animo doesn't offer the same return on investment as that of the others. For example, Hydro is one element where the more the merrier. Shinto and Yelan comprise a double Hydro squad. Nilo, Nahida, Shinto, and Kokomi feature three Hydro units. This applies to all the other elements too. Electro units are paired very often for the sake of Aggravate and Taser teams. Pyro units are joined together for teams like Raiden National, featuring Shangling and Bennett. Cryo units work in tandem with each other to achieve freeze more consistently. Even the other two elements, Dendro and Geo, are birds of a feather as well. It's not only reasonable, but encouraged to have pairs of the same elements since you can gain access to their corresponding elemental resonance, some of which are incredibly valuable. Pyro gives more attack, Hydro gives more HP, and many Hydro units are HP scalers. Cryo gains crit rate, Geo gets a metric ton of stuff. The one elemental resonance that isn't conducive to active combat is Animo, decreasing stamina consumption by 15%, increasing movement speed by 10%, and lowering skill cooldowns by 5%. Sounds impressive on paper, but not many care about stamina consumption since they don't use charge attacks anyway. Movement speed isn't really a combat stat in this game since most of the time you iframe through stuff and 5% CDR isn't really that much. Consequently, this makes Animo a very competitive element as you almost never want to have two in one party unless you're running Wanderer or Shao as your main. Now when we remember that Animo's main functions are crowd control, reaction chaining, and damage amplifications, this puts Jean at a massive disadvantage when trying to earn a spot in your team even though she's a fantastic character. Her biggest problem is that she's a healer and defensive support in the one element where you really don't want to be. Were she any other element, Pyro, Hydro, Cryo, Electro, what have you, I'd go so far as to say she'd be a tier 1 character. Maybe not tier 0, that's too generous, but she would be used a lot more. The job of Animo is to force all enemies into a tight area, get lots of reactions off as possible, and amp your team. None of which Jean is really able to do. In fact, she does the opposite. While Galeblade draws enemies near the point of impact and keeps them close together, they're launched far away from a location, requiring you to chase after them. This alone wouldn't be cause for concern as they're thrown at a distance that would be favorable for ranged follow-ups. It's the others that compound on top of that. If you look at the ability descriptions for Galeblade and Dandelion Breeze, neither of them absorb other elements and change color. You know, the very aspect that defines the animal element. Mind you, it doesn't prevent her from achieving swirl, as that's a different thing, but elemental absorption is what makes animal so broken in the first place. It enables characters like Sucrose, Venti, and Kazuha to effectively double as a Pyro, Hydro, Cryo, or Electro unit. That's a lot of potential damage you miss out on. The head scratcher here is that Jean's Galeblade bears a lot of resemblance to Traveler's Palm Vortex. There's no reason why it shouldn't have elemental absorption when she creates a whirlwind that can pull enemies and objects toward it. Dandelion Breeze would have also been a great ability to assimilate elements. It deals periodic animal damage over time, just like how Sucrose and Kazuha's burst deal periodic animal damage. Animo's strength isn't founded within its own properties. It's founded within its ability to interface with one of the other four elements. More specifically, its ability to absorb one of the four elements and deal damage as if it were that element. Jean cannot do this in any capacity outside of Swirl. The value of this exceeds any possible individual benefit she can provide. Kaza, Sucrose, and Venti currently dominate the Animo scene thanks to their high combination of area coverage, crowd control, and reaction potential. It doesn't matter how much damage Jean's abilities do at base, she can't drive reactions as well as they can. 
Furthermore, Sucrose and Kasuha take that reaction potential and drive it all the way home, while Venti doubles down on the crowd control and area coverage aspect. The elemental mastery buff for their team overshadows any amount of damage Jean can offer from herself, especially with Kasuha who grants an elemental damage boost for his entire party just by achieving Swirl. Venti on the other hand has a massive friggin' vortex that chainsaws everyone to pieces. Again, by itself, lacking those things doesn't automatically disqualify you from being good. It's just that outside of animal carry teams, there's seldom an instance where you would want to use two animal characters, and even if you feel inclined to add Jean with Kozala, Sucrose, or Venti, just so you can take advantage of the heal or maybe the bonus damage on animal shred from a C4, that would be a valid point if we didn't have a certain someone else with an active regeneration field. Venom's Fantastic Voyage is almost identical in purpose. It's a damage nuke followed by a big circle that regens the active character's health and applies pyro to them. Only in Bennett's case, he supplements a titanic attack boost to his team, making it pretty much infinitely better than Dandelion Breeze. Now, for those who aren't aware, there's a pretty funny interaction between Bennett and Jean's burst collectively referred to as Sunfire. So basically what happens is, if you drop both Bennett and Jean's ultimates on top of each other and stand in them, they will constantly try to override each other's elemental status. And while that's happening, you basically become a living pyro swirl. My guess is the name Sunfire was inspired by the item Sunfire Aegis in League of Legends, which is a burning aura effect that damages nearby enemies. Sunfire Overvape isn't half bad, but assuming you're not actively prioritizing Sunfire, Jean has to be a secondary animal unit since if she's your primary animal unit, logic dictates why would you ever use her when there's Kazaha, Sucrose, or Venti who contribute far more DPS and reactions, but having two animal characters is redundant and inefficient as you get very little if anything out of it. That's what I mean when I said her biggest problem is that she's in the one element where her playstyle and abilities are not good to have. If she could absorb elements, then that would be another thing. You could forfeit damage in exchange for more survivability. If you're specifically looking for a healer though, you can choose someone who supplies an additional element, one that might be essential to the success of that team. Picture all the best teams in the game, like Raiden National, Freeze, uh, Taser, Dendro, there's also Double Hydro. You really can't fit Jean into any of these teams because they all need 4 party slots to function at their best, and any party that features an animal character explicitly needs that character to facilitate elemental reactions, which Jean can't do. She can't taser, she can sort of help her freeze, but her area coverage is eclipsed by her peers. Raiden National is out of the question, Dendro teams are the most character stringent teams in the game. Double Hydro is a hard maybe. The main onfielder for Double Hydro is usually Hu Tao, who prefers to maintain her health below 50% to achieve maximum output, hence why she's one of the few characters who actively doesn't want Bennett on her team. Jean's healing would be counterproductive in Double Hydro unless your pyro character is Yoimiya or maybe Dia if she's any good. I'm writing the script before she's officially released, so I don't have any information on her yet. This leaves Jean with only one option, exclusive animal support, like for Xiao or Wanderer. Three problems with this. One, like I mentioned before, Animo isn't really known for having the best main DPSs because Animo is not a carry element, it's more of a supporty driver element. We just got Wanderer who's not half bad, but that leads us to problem two. Wanderer was released with Farazan, who's another animal support. Compared to Jean, Farazan is a very offense-oriented support, making her more slot efficient for Wanderer parties, and obviously you don't want three animal characters, that's completely redundant. Problem 3, Shell is... Please don't torch me at the stake for saying this. Average. He's not that good. Yes, yes, I know C6 Shell goes Thanos mode on everyone, but then again so do a lot of other characters, and also how many people have C6 Shell? Jean basically has only two teams where she would be her first call, Shao's support and Sunfire. Sunfire can be a lot of fun if you're committed to it, but optimally speaking, you're grasping at straws to make her useful. Circumstance is basically what it is. Jean's a good character, a really great one at that. I would put her in the list of top 5 most underrated characters, which I might work on during the spring. It's just that her element actively works against her because she doesn't conform to the strong points of that element. Animo discourages pairs or trios, and Jean doesn't have all the bells and whistles of her peers, yet it implicitly mandates that you have all those bells and whistles. Like I said, I feel like she would be used way more often if she was any other element. Oh, and there's one other circumstantial issue. Jean is hard to get. Now I personally disagree with that because for some inexplicable reason, every 50-50 I lose is Jean. Like I kid you not, my Jean is C8. I think I got like 9 Jeans over 2 years and change. Meanwhile, my Chi-Chi is only C1 or C2. But for those of you who aren't a whale, it can be difficult to get her. She's never had her own banner, meaning even if you do want her, you have to whale on the standard banner and pray that you somehow pull for her and not the other banner 5 stars. It may sound like a trivial thing, but in all seriousness, that's a part of why her play rate is so low on top of the stuff we discussed throughout the video. I'm sure by now us day 1 players have her, but chances are, if you're a day 1 player, you also have a deck to have Venti, Kasuha, and or Sucrose. Do I think she has a chance to see a resurgence in the meta? Absolutely. If we get bosses or enemies that deal a lot of damage and have a debuff effect where you get screwed over if you're afflicted with Pyro or Electro or something, 
then we will most definitely see Jean become relevant again. Not sure how long that will take, seeing as Genshin prefers to not delve into complex combat mechanics and whatnot, but contrary to popular belief, she's not a jack-of-all-trades master of none. She is in fact a specialist, just an extremely niche one. So what are your thoughts on Jean? Can you think of scenarios outside of Sunfire where she would see worthwhile mainstream use? Let me know in the comments down below. That's gonna be it for today, so if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe, really helps out the channel. Also, consider following me on Twitter at VarsFarm, joining my Discord server, and checking out my other Why No One Plays episodes if you haven't yet. But till next time, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you again soon in the next one. Take care.